The Rise and Fall of Sean Quinn, from leaving school at 15 to Ireland's richest man in prison. Once Ireland's richest man, Sean Quinn had a long journey to amass his wealth, from leaving school at 15, working on the family farm and spreading his business empire into many sectors. The Cavan native is the subject of a three-part RTE documentary this week. Quinn Country delves into the story of Quinn as he rose from a teenager working on his family farm to the wealthiest man in the country and then bust. The businessman was declared bankrupt in 2011 due to billions of euro worth of debt. Following bankruptcy, he was jailed in November 2012 for contempt of court and served nine weeks in Mountjoy Prison. However, before all of that, he started from humble beginnings and founded his first business at the age of 26, RSVP reports. Here's everything you know about Sean Quinn's journey to become the richest man in Ireland. First business Sean Quinn left school at 15, but that never stopped him. He got his start in 1973 when he started extracting gravel, sand and shale from his family's farm. He washed the materials and sold it to local builders. He began to quarry with just one lorry delivering sand and gravel. Sean Quinn Quarries, Limited, was his first big success. From this came Quinn Cement in the late 1980s, the basis of his wealth. Further business ventures, in 1998, he spent 100 million pounds, 152 million euros, on a new state-of-the-art glass manufacturing plant across the road from the concrete plant, Quinn Glass. It was so successful that its only rival on the island of Ireland, Irish Glass Bottles Ringsend Plant, closed down just four years later. Next, Sean founded the Quinn Group and got into the hospitality industry with Quinn Hotels. He also founded Quinn Light Pack, Quinn Financial Services, and Quinn Direct Insurance. He went on to make a dent in the motor insurance business by setting up Quinn Direct. Profits for the Quinn Direct reached €232 million Euros in 2005, the Independent reported. In January 2007 the Quinn Group purchased Ireland's second biggest health insurance provider, Bupa Ireland for 150 million euros in a deal that saved Bupa from leaving Ireland's health insurance industry. Ireland's richest man, Quinn's net worth at its peak, as of February 2008, was estimated at almost 5 billion euros, approximately 3.084 billion pounds, according to the Sunday Times Rich List. At the time, he was Ireland's richest man. In November 2005 the Quinn Group, which was then privately owned by the Quinn family, was estimated to be worth between 4 billion euros and 5 billion euros. What did he spend his money on? The former billionaire claimed his tastes were very simple in a previous interview with RTE in 2007. His biggest extravagance was a 24 million dollars, 15 million euros private jet, as well as his former seven bedroom, 14,500 square foot property in Cavan. His daughter Sierra is also well known for having a 100,000 euros wedding cake that was delivered from New York for her special day. He said in the same RTE interview that family was more important to him than his riches. He is married to Patricia and they have a son and four daughters. Moscow the Kutuzov Tower block generates an estimated 14 million pounds, 22 million dollars, a year in rent and it should have been the Anglo-Irish Bank's biggest payback. Again, it had been signed away into a network of companies. Stockholm, a secret boardroom coup allowed the Quinn family to take control of the company and move assets that had been used as security for loans from the Anglo-Irish Bank out of the reach of the bank. Darylin, County Fermanagh Sean Quinn started in business on his family farm with a £100, $150, loan to extract gravel. He expanded into manufacturing, insurance and property becoming a billionaire in the process. Dublin Sean Quinn was declared bankrupt in the Irish Republic, owing £2 billion, $3 billion, to the then Anglo-Irish Bank. The bank was taken over by the state and its only role now is to recover money for the Irish taxpayer. The Quinn Family Trust was set up in Switzerland at the same time as the Belize shell companies were being bought. British Virgin Islands cash from Ukraine passed through at least one company claiming to be owed money by the Quinn-owned property empire. Belize much of the missing money, including 100 meters, $157 million, to a single company, went to a series of shell companies here. 
The registered addresses of the companies were this post box. Vanuatu the South Pacific Island became a target in the search for Sean Quinn's missing millions after investigations in Australia. Vanuatu specializes in offshore banking and offers strict secrecy and no taxes for investors. Australia investigators from the Irish Banking Resolution Corporation flew to Sydney and Melbourne in search of £400 million, $600 million, of Sean Quinn's disappearing millions. At the height of his success, Sean Quinn was the 12th richest man in the UK and the richest in Ireland. Sean Quinn, once the richest man in Ireland, has been found guilty of contempt of court in the Sunday Times Rich List of 2007. He was just one place behind Sir Richard Branson and several above Bernie Ecclestone, with an estimated family fortune of £3.05 billion. In December last year, he walked into a Belfast courtroom and declared himself bankrupt. He owed the bank more than £2 billion. He now topped a new list. He was the biggest bankrupt in UK history. But the bank that picked up his debts, the Irish state-owned IBRC, challenged his right to bankruptcy in the UK and successfully fought to transfer him to the jurisdiction of courts in the Irish Republic. That's because the bank was already fighting Sean Quinn, and his family, for the recovery of hundreds of millions of pounds worth of assets. The bank had taken charge of the Quinn Empire in April 2011. The insurance division was sold off but with the Irish taxpayer funding a financial black hole in its accounts that could cost £800 million. De Quinning, the manufacturing division, which employs thousands in the border counties of Fermanagh and Cavan making building products, had its debts restructured but even if it too is sold, the Irish taxpayer will not see any return. The only hope for the bank of recovering some of the billions owed lies in a vast portfolio of international property. The property, in Ukraine, Russia and India, is worth around £400 million. But since taking over, the bank has found itself literally locked out of the properties and rent to the tune of £20 million has gone missing. When it took control last year, the bank ousted all the senior Quinn family members and senior executives on day one. The process was called, the quinning, by locals and provoked a violent backlash by some, with premises and company property being attacked. However, it soon became clear that the bank's control over the group was not as comprehensive as it thought. Secret coup, the international property had always been controlled by a Swedish holding company. But a number of weeks after taking charge, an invoice from Swedish lawyers which arrived at company headquarters alerted the bank to what appeared to be moves by the Quinn family to move the valuable property assets beyond its reach. In a secret boardroom coup, Sean Quinn had been reinstalled as head of group property operations in Stockholm and had begun signing away rights to that valuable property. Sean Quinn and his family had exploited legal loopholes to take charge again. So the bank rushed to get a court order in Ireland that would stop any further interference. It's that court order on which Tuesday's verdict rests. From that point, the 27th of June 2011, onwards, any meddling in the property would be a breach of the injunction and constitute contempt of court. But the court order didn't stop the attacks on bank property. In what appeared to be a sophisticated and coordinated international attack, the bank lost control over the entire empire. A pattern was repeated across Russia, Ukraine and India and it was essentially a three-stage asset stripping process. False claims, firstly an individual would emerge claiming they were owed tens of millions against a particular property asset that belonged to the bank. Their claims appeared to be supported by documentation. Before the bank could respond, it would find that these claims were agreed locally and ownership of the property effectively handed over to these mysterious individuals. Then ownership would be transferred again to an offshore company, making it difficult for the bank to discover who, ultimately, stood to benefit and therefore who was behind the raid. In court, the bank alleged that the Quins were responsible for creating these false claims on the property and that they were the ultimate beneficiaries of the offshore companies. But what was crucial to the judgment was not whether the Quins were involved, but when they took action. Anything done after the 27th of June last year would breach the injunction and constitute contempt of court.